sir. It may be recalled that the problem started in early 1962 when the Philippine government began to take an interest to champion the private interests of the heirs of the Sultanate of Sulu. It raised the issue to a national level by trying to establish that the 1878 agreement signed by the then Sultan of Sulu and an Austrian from Hong Kong, Baron de Overbeck, was not a cession but only a lease. The area affected according to the Sulu Grant stretches from Pindasan River on the west coast of Sabah to the Sibaku River in the east, part of which is within the present territory of Indonesia and the rest of which only forms part of Sabah. How in the first place it would be possible for the Philippines to present what it called a legal claim in parts, without including Indonesia at the same time, is one of the mysteries that our delegation in Bangkok failed to unravel. But probably, sir, political expediency might be the answer. However, on the basis of this labored interpretation of the 1878 agreement, the Philippine government argues and persists in arguing that the sovereignty of that area, which as I have noted forms only part of Sabah and extends into Indonesian territory and remained, throughout these years, with the Sultanate of Sulu. And such sovereignty had been transferred by a new Sultan to the Philippine government, by a number of formal instruments in April and September, 1962 respectively. Although as a matter of historical fact the Sultanate itself had ceased to exist in 1936 and had not been a sovereign entity in its own territory for already more than half a century. We have all achieved independence for our countries and our peoples. We have all acknowledged the rights of colonial peoples everywhere to exercise their rights of self-determination and we have all undertaken to respect each other's sovereignty and integrity. Any attempts to challenge sovereignties created in accordance with the United Nations Charter on the basis of new interpretation of old agreements would mean the opening of Pandora's box and would expose this part of the world to claims and counterclaims which would inevitably lead to chaos and disorder. The people of Sabah have since emerged from their colonial status and have given for themselves a future of independence, in association with other states within Malaysia. This, they have done, through a series of events beginning with the assessment of the people's desire by the joint Malaya. British Cobold Commission in April, 1962, and subsequently through statewide general elections, based on universal adult suffrage in December, 1962, in which the question of whether Sabah should as a state join Malaysia, was the main issue in the campaign. The result as honorable members will remember, was an unanimous decision by the people of Sabah in favor of achieving independence as a state within Malaysia. 113 of the 119 seats were won by political parties who were committed to this decision while the remaining six seats were won by independent candidates who also supported the proposal. 159,831 voters were registered representing 90% of those eligible to vote. Approximately 75% of the adult population exercised their franchise. Honorable members may also recall that we were then satisfied that the ascertainment by the Joint Malaya, British Cobold Commission, and the result of the general elections constituted irrefutable evidence that the people of the state of Sabah had fully exercised their right of self-determination and had made clear their choice as regards their future, in accordance with the United Nations Charter. Unfortunately, however, the Philippines chose to oppose the formation of Malaysia and refused to accept that the self-determination process had been properly carried out, accordingly. In a sincere desire to ensure that peace, stability and good neighborliness in our region would be maintained, the Malayan government at that time agreed to the proposal made by the Philippines and Indonesia during the tripartite summit meetings in Manila, July 30 to August 5, 1963, to invite the United Nations Secretary General or his representatives to ascertain prior to the establishment of Malaysia the wishes of the people of Sabah, and to take into consideration whether Malaysia was a major issue if not the main issue at the elections and whether the procedure of the 1962 elections was in conformity with democratic practice and in accordance with the resolution of the United Nations General Assembly. As honorable members are aware, the Secretary General accepted this assignment and the ascertainment was completed on 13th of September, 1963. The Secretary General's team was satisfied on every question posed in its terms of reference as stated by the three heads of government. The Secretary General's conclusions which had been agreed by the three governments as not being subject to ratification or confirmation by any of the government concerned, were submitted on 14th of September, 1963. The Secretary General categorically stated that and I quote, Bearing in mind the fundamental agreement of the three participating governments in Manila meetings, 
and a statement of the Republic of Indonesia and the Republic of the Philippines that they would welcome the formation of Malaysia, provided that the support of the people of the territories concerned was ascertained by me and in my own opinion. Complete compliance with the principle of self-determination within the requirements of the General Assembly Resolution 1541-15, Principle 9 of the Annex, was ensured. My conclusion based on the findings of the mission is that on both of these counts, there is no doubt about the wishes of the sizable majority of the peoples of these territories to join in the Federation of Malaysia. Reaching my conclusions, I have taken account of the concern expressed with regard to the political factors resulting from the constitutional status of the territories and about influences from outside the area.